Uh, we are so glad to uh, uh, to have, and all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank here. I want to get it right. Rich, Brother Richard Jackson with us today, and uh, he's uh, he's out of Sandersville, and he represents the Gideon Ministry. So, Brother Richard, come on and share with us whatever the Lord's got on your heart, and uh, we're glad to have you here in beautiful downtown Rents, Georgia. Uh, amen. Amen, all right. brother. Good to have you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. Be sure I just see what I can drop this morning. <laughs> or I'm liable to drop anything. Um, first thing, let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've blessed us with and the opportunity once again, Lord, to be in your house. Fathers, we've been mentioned this morning about those that have had to leave their home because of the storm. Lord, we ask you just to be with each and every one. Bless them and keep their strength up, keep their faith up, so when they arrive back at their homes, everything will be well. Lord, we love you in this place, and we thank you for loving us. In your precious Son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I used to be a blind man, but now my vision's clear. Mercy came and drove the shame from me. There's peace in mind with Jesus that drives out every fear. I'm stronger than I thought I'd ever be. I can't tell you why he loves me as bad as I had been and why I'm worthy of this life of victory. I know I'm not a scholar, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, but I can tell you what salvation's done for me. Now you wonder where you can learn about salvation and this man called Jesus? Right here, in God's holy word, the Bible. The Gideons distribute Bibles everywhere. We give them to firefighters, police officers, EMTs, paramedics, nurses, and to our military. I want to tell you a little story about a lady. She's from Noonan, Georgia. She goes up to her pastor one morning. And she said, Pastor, I want to tell you my story. Just a few months or a couple of years prior to that, she was in the Army, stationed out in Oklahoma. Well, the Gideons went around, and they gave this young lady and her friends a little Gideon Testament, kind of like this one. So there it was camouflaged. She told the pastor that uh, some, of the, some of the other ladies had taken their Gideon Bibles and placed them on their bunks. Some of them had put them in their foot lockers. And she held on to her. She said she started reading it. And then she began to read it. She's reading it every day. And she began to notice that some of her friends were reading their uh, New Testaments also. And before long, every evening, they were sitting around having their own Bible study through those little testaments. Well, not long after that, this young lady was involved in a horrific accident. Had compound fractures to both of her legs. The doctors told her she would probably never even walk again. Not only did she walk and prove to them how strong she was, she was able to run and was able to continue to serve in the United States Army. Her unit gets called up to go to Iraq. Just a few days. Now, she was she was not able to go. Let me back up just a minute. She was not able to go. The doctor said because of her injuries, she was not fit for combat duty, but she could still stay in the army. Well, her unit goes to Iraq. She was not able to be there. She gets notice about six weeks after they arrive that a roadside bomb went off and killed five of her closest friends. She tells the pastor, she said, you know, I know because of those little New Testaments that all of my friends are now in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Very much. 
You know, Isaiah 55, 11 says, that So shall my word go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I am well pleased. Now, I want to ask y'all a question. How many of you, if you'd have known that Gideon's speaker was going to be here this morning, would have stayed home? <laughs> Don't raise your hand, I'm just kidding. Now, I will tell you this. When I was growing up, if my parents found out the Gideon speaker was going to be there, we didn't go. <laughs> my daddy said, them folks is boring. They get tired of listening to them. And now, where am I? Standing up here as a Gideon. You know, we distribute Bibles in over 200 countries, printed in almost 100 languages. Now, up on the uh, Newfoundland Peninsula, there's a group of natives there called the Nanets. Now, these people are hunters and fishermen. This is how they survive. One day, one of the uh, leaders of the tribe was out walking the beach. What he's doing, he's looking for food for his people. Times are tough. They have not able to be able to find the animals that they needed. Times are tough. As he walks, now I know this sounds far-fetched, but I'll get to it in a minute. As he walks, a Gideon Bible falls out of the sky and lands not too far from this man. He sees it. He picks it up. He takes it back to his tribe and tells them he had received a sign. And now, in that little community, there's a Christian church with about 35 saved souls. Now I'm going to tell you how them Bible, how that Bible got there. There was a, a group of people just like you had prayed for somewhere to send Bibles. All right, that group of people found out about the Nanettes. They start collecting money for the Gideons. The Gideons arrange for these Bibles to be sent, and they're being sent through Russia for some reason or another. This is where they're coming from. Planes coming from Russia. As they're flying in to deliver the not only... Uh, goods, survival goods, you know, food and water and clothing and this kind of thing. They're also taking these Bibles. Well, on this aircraft is some uh, government officials. And sometimes we know how government officials are. They're going to go through and see what do we have here that we don't need. They said, well, we can use all this food, but we don't need these books. So they start throwing the Bibles out the window. This how. That Bible winds up on the beach. There was a man, his name was Jonathan. Jonathan has to have a physical, like we do. You know, we have a physical once a year, every two years or so. So he goes for his physical. He tells the nurse that comes in to draw his blood, said, I don't do well drawing blood. And I have fainted. He said, but usually I can talk my way through it. She said, well, what is it that you would like to talk about? Jonathan says, how about the Lord? Bridget says, okay. All right, as they're, as they're there, Jonathan is leading Bridget. Leads her to Christ that morning. The doctor comes in. He realizes what has taken place. He just hesitates a minute. Bridget signs the back of that little New Testament that he gives her. God's, which is God's love letter. Saying that she had given her life to Christ. You know, that was a really good day. Jonathan says that uh, Gideon, that Bridget comes in to take his blood. But what she received was the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now all of this takes place on what day? Good Friday. Isn't it wonderful? You know, the Gideons have several programs. I noticed this morning when I come in that y'all have racks on the back. The pastor showed me another rack out here not too far from his office. And in those racks we normally keep uh, Gideon cards. And undoubtedly, 
this church likes the Gideon cards because uh, y'all need some. You know, and the Gideon cards, you know, Gideon's cards can be used for all kinds of things. It's not just memorial cards, but thank you cards, thinking of you cards, pastor appreciation cards, all kinds of cards. And the thing about it is to know that not only are you sending a card, but you're also sending Bibles. But you know, the Gideons are dedicating their lives to put a Bible in the hands of every man, woman, and child that wants one. Now you ask, who are these Gideons? Some of you may not be familiar with us. You know, we're a group of professional and businessmen that are dedicated to spreading Bibles. Not only with the Gideons, but the Gideons Auxiliary, which are the wives and widows of Gideons. My wife goes everywhere I go just about it. She is my prayer partner. Without the ladies auxiliary praying for us and keeping us uplifted in our task, it would be tough for us to do what we do. In uh, August of 2014, the Gideons International received a letter from a fellow by the name of Charles Thompson. Now, Mr. Thompson is a resident of a retirement center out in Texas. All right, he wants a Bible. I ain't talking about a little New Testament. I'm talking about he wants a full-size, full-grown Bible with all the words. Well, the International sends it to the Texas city camp that he, that he needs a Bible. A fellow by the name of Robert Costello, excuse me, Ralph Costello, goes out to deliver this Bible. When he gets there, he cannot find Mr. Thompson. Now, he's a little worried. He goes to his room, the door is locked, can't get in. He knocks, doesn't answer. He knocks again, he doesn't answer. So he goes up and he finds him one of the uh, nurses and says, I'm trying to see Mr. Thompson and I can't get into his room, it's locked. So she said, well, we, we might better go in there and check on him. So she goes and unlocks the door and there sits Mr. Thompson reading his little New Testament. Mr. Costello tells Mr. Thompson why he's there. That he has brought him a Bible. They sit and talk for a couple of hours and come to find out that really what Mr. Thompson needed, he needed someone to sit down with him and hear his story. Mr. Costello said it was a true blessing that the Lord sent him that day. But Jeremiah 29 11 states that for all, for I know the plan that I have for you. Plans of welfare and not evil to give you a future and hope. Um, I'll tell you another program that we have and this is new, kind of new, been out about a year. As I said a while ago, the Gideons are a group of professional and, bu professional and businessmen. Not everyone can be a Gideon. Not everyone qualifies because of the way that we operate. But now we have a program that's called the Friends of Gideons. Now, the Friends of Gideons, anyone can be a part of. You know, we have two different things. We have what we call a prayer partner, which I really love. To be a prayer partner, you contact uh, your local Gideon. And tell them that you need the information. Or you can go on the Gideon's International website, which is gideons.org. And look on there about the Friends of Gideon's. And when you join as a prayer partner, you'll receive, you'll be able to receive the e-news. Which tells about what we're doing, not just in Georgia, not just the United States, but all over the world. You'll be able to see that. You'll get a prayer calendar, just like the ones that we use on our, at our prayer times every Monday morning. You get invitations to the Gideon events. So when we have uh, fight fun rallies, you know, you can go to those. The uh, second one, though, is a finan what we call a financial partner. Now, that financial partner dedicates to make a donation once a year to the Gideons. In that, excuse me, in that they receive the same 
opportunities that a prayer partner does. But they also get uh, two New Testaments in a special gray color and vouchers to receive others at later dates. And what they can do with those is, is they can use those in their own personal testimonies. And I say, if you're interested in this, we would love for you to contact us about it. As I was telling you a while ago, to where we put Gideon Bibles. You know, none of you have traveled without seeing a Gideon Bible in a motel. If you've been to a hospital, you've seen our Bibles in the hospital rooms. I'm going to tell you a little story about putting Bibles in motels. In Orange County, California, a group of Gideon shows up to bring some Bibles to this motel. The owner jumps up and said, it's a miracle. He was talking to his sons on the phone at that time. They had had a visit from the motel, hotel inspectors, the home office. And they had 12 deficiencies at this motel. Number seven, there was no Bibles in the rooms. And here the Gideon show up. To bring him Bibles. He said it's a miracle as he receives 150 Bibles to be placed in his room. You know the Gideons distribute Bibles at about 140 a minute. That's 9,000 Bibles an hour. 216,000 Bibles a day. We have orders right now for 7 million Bibles to be distributed worldwide. How do we do that? With the funds we raise from church families like this one through the Gideon card program. But I'm going to tell you something a little different about Gideon's raising money. 100% of every dollar that you give to the Gideons goes to purchase Bibles. 100%. Not one dime, not one penny from that money is used for administrative services. Our administrative services are paid for through our membership fees that we pay once a year. Not many organizations can say that. You know, we can place one of these little New Testaments in someone's hands for a dollar and forty cent. Hotel, motel, Bibles run five dollars. Nowhere else can you get a Bible for five dollars or a little New Testament for a dollar and forty cent. This morning, I was standing at the end of the, at the exit of the church with an open Bible, accepting your donations, and we certainly appreciate all of that. Pastor Van, I want to thank you for allowing us, the Gideons, to be a part of this service this morning and letting us tell just a little bit about what we do. May the Lord bless each and every one of you today. Thank you so much, brother. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. You know... He, he mentioned something, and I brought back memories for me as a child. Uh, I went to church basically when I was with my dad as, as a kid. And I do remember Gideon's coming and thinking to myself, Oh, boy. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Since I've been in Georgia... I have always enjoyed, including today, all of our Gideon speakers, and they have really done a great job, and uh, I appreciate them very, very much. Let me tell you why, why uh, getting the Word of God out is so important, and he, he alluded to this, and I'm not going to preach another sermon so y'all can relax. Uh, in fact, you might even get out a few minutes earlier than normal. Now, some of you may be rejoicing over that, uh, but... Uh, Here's why it's so important. It says this in the Word of God. In verse number 11 of Isaiah 55. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. 
It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God says, my word will not return void. You know, I can, I can tell people my opinion. And maybe it'll have an impact and maybe it won't. But if I tell people this is what God says, Amen. it will have an impact. Now, I remember many years ago hearing a particular preacher. And he says, well... He said, I'm here today to either make you mad or make you glad. Because either way, you're going to take it home with you. And I've learned something. That's what the Word of God does. It'll either make you glad or sometimes it'll make you mad because it sort of crimps your, what your preferred style is. But the Word of God is that which has the potential to have a great impact. You know, I don't know what your need is in your heart and life today. There could be folks here today that have never really put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you something. You need Jesus more than you need anything else. Uh, you need Jesus more than you need church membership. You need Jesus more than you need uh, morality in your life. Now, don't get me wrong. I think church membership is great. I think living a, a clean, godly, holy life is a wonderful thing. But all of those things without Jesus are pointless. You need Jesus more than anything else. Maybe there's a need in your heart and life that nobody knows about but you and the Lord. Well, we're going to have an invitation in just a moment. We're going to, we're going to give you an opportunity. If you'd like to know Christ as your Savior, you can meet me right down here at the front during the invitation. Uh, either I or somebody will take their Bible and show you how to trust Christ as your Savior. Maybe you just want to pray about something today. Something God is dealing with your heart about. The altars are open. I want you to feel free to use them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, then we're going to stand for our invitation. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for what we've been able to experience today. Lord, the, the testimonies that we've heard about how the Word of God has impacted people's lives. Lord, we thank you for that so very much. And we do pray now, Lord, in a very special way that, Lord, you would just have your way and will accomplished in every one of our hearts and lives. If there's someone here today with a special need, meet that need by your grace. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.